Hello, welcome back to Desktop Publishing with Cork Express. My name is Martin Turner. This is a series we're running right the way through 2017 with one tutorial per week. And we're looking at real world applications of Cork Express, the world's most powerful desktop publishing software. Well, uh, this week, I want us to go and look at text boxes in depth. Now, this is not the most uh, exciting thing, uh, but if you've not really got into this, there are some quite powerful things that text boxes can do. And what I've seen is a lot of people spending quite a lot of time and effort trying to achieve things by other means, which are built right in to the text box. So let's go to the screen. And uh, here on the top left-hand corner, uh, I've got a uh, text box. I'm just going to zoom in on that. And it's full, as we've seen before, with some uh, just junk text, which I've got from the placeholder tool. And um, let's take a look. So I'm going the wrong way there. Um, OK, let's, let's take a click on there and take a look in uh, underneath. So going to the measurements panel at the bottom here and uh, text box. Now, over here, we've got various settings. And we've not really talked about the measurements panel much before. But pretty much everything you usually want is in home. So the X and Y of the box, that's top left hand corner, width and height, uh, its rotation, we can just change that. Um, uh, it's skew, you can skew the box and that's going to skew the content as well. We'll come back to that. Um, you've got the, uh, the corners. Um, you've got uh, different kinds of corners. So you can have uh, these, these rather uh, Baroque uh, or even Rococo uh, corners. You've got uh, beveled corners um, and you can do whatever you want with that. Uh, and here we've got suppressed box output. So you can have a box of text uh, or anything on the page which you refer to but which doesn't appear uh, in the final document. Now if I click that, uh, you'll see uh, right down here that, uh, click it again, uh, you'll see that a little uh, what red circle comes over. If I now go to view, uh, hide suppressed, um, that's interesting, that ought to be hiding that. Um, Let's just come back to the page. Okay, so while I've got it selected, it doesn't hide it. Just get rid of that extra box I created. But as, as soon as I unselect it, it hides. I'm gonna unhide that so it comes back. Um, and that's quite a useful thing if you're making notes for yourself or your colleagues and you don't trust the notes feature. Now, um, if I had that box like that on a page in, say, a magazine with, with no kind of border at all, it would, it would look a little bit rubbish, It'd look a little bit cheap, low quality. So let's go down to the next one. And here I've just set some insets in. Now, clearly the price of insets, if you see Octavius uh, is in there, um, but the price of an inset is that Octavius is now uh, um, ends up off the page. You always see that little red marker there, the red X, uh, to tell you you're missing some text off the page. Um, but what I've done is in so you've got your home stuff we've talked about, uh, and this reproduces useful things from other tabs. So uh, we've got our, our suppress, we've got our um, box color and, and, and so on, and a number of columns, which is part of the, part of the text box tool, uh, and also the gap between the columns. Um, see that gap changing. Uh, but uh, over here, we've got the... Um, the inset on the text. And if, if you now actually went to the text box tab itself, you'd see those things and some others which we haven't looked at yet. Well, let's go back to the home thing. We'll keep it simple for now. So home will always have the most relevant things for whatever uh, thing you're doing. So if I change that inset, I can uh, make the text seem um, we'll just reduce those columns to one again. That text can seem more or less prestigious. If you, if you put a huge amount of inset in, you're really adding prestige. Look at that. You know, um, if you did that, uh, how much, let's go back to the entire page, how much more important does that one look than the others? Um, so it is called the outset tool, but it could be called 
the importance tool. Um, uh, let's, let's change that back now. Let's go back to zero. And we can also, if we click on um, uh, this button down here, uh, we can actually set it so that we've got separate indents. So this is the top indent, this is the bottom indent, this is the left indent, and this is the right indent. And when you want to get it exactly right, that can be very powerful. So much of the time, you'll just unclick that, uh, and um, uh, it won't be a problem. But uh, when you need to get it just right, you can do that. OK, what other options have we got? Well, um, uh, let's look at this box here. Uh, OK, what have I done there? I can't see what I've done there. Okay. This, is, this is run text around all sides, but uh, we'll come back to that. Let's go to this one. Um, in the top right here, in the middle here, what I've done is I've flipped the text backwards, uh, or rather, um, I've, I've flipped it as a, um, uh, I've mirrored it rather. And this is only in the actual frame uh, text box tool of the measurement. So it's not in the home, but if you come right away across to the right here, you'll see this, this flip and you can flip it vertically as well. Now, um, why would you do that? Well, there are all kinds of reasons why you might, uh, and it's just worth knowing about. And I've, I've seen people uh, spending hours on something uh, and, and never quite realizing that they can actually just do that straight in Quark Express. So uh, an example, if you wanted to do uh, a, uh, a shadow on the horizon, uh, you might decide that you wanted to do that. Um, and let's now take that down there. Uh, so we're copying that. And now I'm just going to, uh, uh, using the text box, box tool, uh, flip that vertically. And now we're going to drop shadow this, apply drop shadow. Um, we're going to turn, you've seen this trick before, we're going to go to the colors. Uh, and uh, turn the opacity to zero, but now we're going to not inherit opacity. So now you've got um, shadow like that. And if I just now command or control the PC, click on that, it'll skew it a bit and uh, look at that. Um, well, that's quite clever. Uh, that's just a use for uh, um, using that particular text box thing. And I have seen people really work on this. Now, I talked earlier about rotating boxes and, and skewing boxes. Well, if you rotate boxes, okay. But if you skew your box, then uh, don't funny things start to happen? Well, let's take a box. Um, sorry, I'll do Command-O to get back. I was losing myself there. Let's take, one of, let's take this box over here. Um, and uh, I'm going to skew the text, on, uh, skew the box itself. I've got this rather nasty, um, uh, rather cheap-looking uh, text skew. So if I go into text box, and if I uh, unskew that, I don't, don't want to unskew that. I want to unskew the text itself. So I've got the box skew over here on the on the left. Yeah, that's for the box. But over here, I've got the text. And if I make the text the reverse of the box skew. I get a skewed box, uh, but I've got the text uh, right way up. And I, again, I can, I can rotate the text in that box. And if I also rotate the box um, uh, to go with that text, I'm just going to get rid of that skew as we're, we're getting confused here. Um, so we'll have the zero skew and also zero skew on here. And so I've now got a rotated box where the text is upright. Um, obviously, you can also rotate the, the text for things like tables uh, and graphs where you want to show uh, various things. OK, enough of that one. What about this? Um, I want my text to fall at the bottom of the box, not at the top. Well, there's some very, rather nice controls for that down here in the middle. So back to my text box and the measurements. And I've got top alignment, bottom alignment, so we're losing ourselves there. Bottom alignment, center alignment, and uh, justified alignment. And what that does, so going again, uh, bottom, uh, center, and justified, is that means that I can have 
the text spread out throughout the box, um, or I can have uh, the text in the middle, the text, text at the bottom or the top. But there's more you can do with that. So here I've got my you know, just standard text spread out, but supposing I want one paragraph at the top and one paragraph at the bottom. Well, come onto this box, and here, what I've done is I've, I've taken uh, the, um, the justified alignment, but here I've got the interparagraph maximum. And uh, I've just set that so that normally, if the interparagraph maximum is set to zero, uh, which is what it is normally, then everything will space up that way. But if I increase that interparagraph, it will allow the box to add more space in between paragraphs before it adds any in between lines. If I make that large enough, I then have text at the top, text at the bottom. But there's more because I can also have another paragraph in the middle. So this is text in the middle. Um, so uh, text at the top, text in the middle, text at the bottom. And if you combine that with some conditional styles and some regular style sheets, you can format uh, in entire catalogs where you've got always the, the title thing and, and then you've got um, uh, the, the, the information at the bottom, you've got the price. Uh, on every single box, you have the, that text flow through from box to box. So um, let's just do that for a second. So, to, the way to do that is to use links. So let me get rid of that text there. Now you've got um, your text uh, on here, uh, and I can flow into there. That's not a problem. Uh, uh, that's using the link tool on the left. But if I wanted to, for example, join up this text with this text, but not overwrite it, uh, if I click that one uh, and that one, and go to Utilities Linkster, I can link and keep text in the same boxes. Uh, so I'm losing myself there. That's better. And uh, what that will now do is uh, it means that all of those are linked together. So you can do whole catalogs uh, with link boxes where uh, using spacing above a title forces it into the next box for title. And the thing just goes straight through from a simple uh, text uh, document, which you're just going to tag with a few tags. Well, that's text boxes. Um, uh, I, they're not the most exciting thing, but they're one of the most useful things. And I hope you've enjoyed that and got something out of it. Um, do join us for more episodes. This is Desktop Publishing with Cork Express. I'm Martin Turner, author of the book of the same title. You can get it from Amazon or the local bookstore. And please do join us next time.